Welcome to the first episode of the Where's Home podcast, hosted by Chandler Danzler. You can listen in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and watch on YouTube. Today we have 2026 Florida Commit outfooter, PG Select Fest alumni, and USA Baseball alumni, and perfect game, first team All-American, Brady Harris. We're pumped to have you on the first podcast. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure. Yep. Before we start off, just tell us who Brady Harris is for the people that don't know. Yeah, so what's up, guys? My name is Brady Harris. I'm a 2026 outfielder. I play baseball for Trinity Christian Academy. It's where I attend high school. And then I play also play baseball for my travel ball team. It's called NBA. So, yeah, I like to play the game, have a lot of fun with it, and glorify God through the game of baseball. Yep. All right, just to get us started with the first topic, let's talk about your high school season with Trinity Christian. You batted 326, OPS of 977, 29 hits, 27 RBIs, five home runs, just tell us how your high school experience was like. Yeah, my high school experience was great. You know, I got to learn from a lot of older guys and a lot of seniors and juniors, a lot of dudes who took me under their wing and taught me how to play the game the right way. And I, I learned a lot from them. So, I mean, it was overall a great experience, all the memories I made with those guys and the coaching staff. And as a team, you know, we didn't finish where we wanted it. But I think we all learned, especially myself, I learned a lot from the season. What were your favorite memories this season on and then off the field? Yeah, so, I mean, on has got to be just competing with my teammates, some of the guys that the seniors and everything, like everybody, you know, I, sometimes I won't – and when you really think about it, I won't be able to play with these guys, some of those guys ever again. So, I mean, just competing and going out and practicing and every day balling out with those guys by my side, you know, is probably my favorite memory. And then off the field, you know, we had a lot of – um road trips as a team and a lot of you know bus trips and sleeping in hotels with your teammates you got roommates and stuff so I mean it's all a super super fun experience you know you got to live kind of that college baseball life but as a high schooler you know with some teammates that took me under their wing as a freshman and made it really enjoyable for me all right is there any specific like play you made that you know it was just good memory oh yeah so I mean I remember the Bishop Snyder one specifically I came up where it was the eighth inning uh, we I came up and we were down three one or three two. It was a three one count, and the kid threw a fastball right down the middle, and I hit the ball probably farthest ball I've ever hit in my life, probably four hundred something feet, and uh, to win the game as a walk off home run in playoffs. So I mean that's pretty high, pretty cool experience for me. That's awesome. Uh, let's talk about who do you think the best pitcher you faced is this high school season? Yeah, so I mean being a really good team and a high known, a well-known team coming into games, you know, we get a lot of everybody's best arms. And uh, I think we got literally everybody's best arm. Like, and I think a really tough guy that he had my number both times we played him. I uh, couldn't really hit off of him very well. You know, I thought his stuff was really good. Chase kick at bowls, you know, shout out to you. You're a pretty good pitcher. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he kept me off balance pretty good at the plate, you know, mm -hmm. he's a great. You know, being ranked eighth in PG and high up in the rankings, how do you treat that and not get caught up in, in that to affect you? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just treat that as like a kind of reward to my hard work. Uh, all the success will come along if you work hard, you know, and that's just a testimony to that. I mean, I don't let it get in my head and let my head get all big and focused on that and fixate on the rankings and stuff. And that's not me as a person. You know, I like to – I don't really like to, you know – make that my personality basically I like to just play my game and do me and all that stuff will come all right here's a tough question here how do you compare the differences of high school ball and travel ball which one would you prefer more yeah so I mean high school ball is a lot different than travel ball you know the competitiveness is 
is a little bit higher. The tension you feel every time you, you're thinking, like, as soon as you get to playoffs, some of those guys, the seniors, the older dudes, it might be your last time stepping on the field with them. So, I mean, the tension and then kind of the stress levels that you get during high school ball are a lot different than summer ball. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, there's a lot of people uh, at a lot of the games. You know, there's a lot of people watching you. You got a, a big spotlight as a freshman on the field, you know, one of the only freshmen. And uh, you kind of got a, a big thing to carry throughout that program as a as a young kid when you got a, a team full of older guys and it's it's really stressful, but I mean it's it's all the same game of baseball. Like summer ball is a little bit different, you know. It's a uh, it's a little bit more laid back, but I mean if you're trying to win championships and do something for a program, obviously you're going to want to do focus on high school ball and stuff. But if you want to get your individual name out there and put yourself on the map, I recommend going and travel ball and summer ball and ball out. You know, you'll get yeah. you'll get your name out there somehow if you if you succeed, man. Yeah. All right, let's uh let's talk about where you train. How do you get the training done during the season? You know, you got all this homework, you got stuff to do. How do you just get it done? Yeah, so I mean, like you said, it, it's pretty tough. You know, you got homework, training, you got school in general. I mean, it takes up a lot of time. I wake up at 5.50 every morning, drive like 45 minutes to school, and then I'll get done with school. I'll, I'll go to practice, and then I'll just train hitting or whatever I need to do to get me right, and then I'll go – home and uh go to the gym and train with torque i train with torque sports performance in saint augustine around where i live they're a, a great development thing for me like it's just it's made me a way better athlete and uh they're a great place to go to they have a big um client list like a, a lot of successful guys so i mean i recommend trying something out like that like torque has been a big thing in my life and my uh my process through baseball so i'm really thankful for that and i uh i'm proud that i'm i'm, I'm able to go there and and get training in on my own and training through them. That's awesome. All right. I see you're wearing the the Gator hat. Uh, kind of brings up us to the next topic. On August 8th of 2022, you committed to the University of Florida. Just take us through the recruiting process and how you got there. How did you start talking to the University of Florida? Yeah, so, I mean, my, my process kind of started really early, maybe compared to a lot of kids and uh, a lot of different players. You know, I mean, it can be really tough. Like I said, with the rankings, you know, you can kind of let that – stuff get to your head you can uh you can choose to play your own game or let that boost your ego a little bit which is not good you know it, it'll start really early like it started in eighth grade and I uh just played throughout uh my normal game and all of it came and I narrowed it down to some schools and uh Florida actually started reaching out to me middle of the summer we played at uh we had a West Palm tournament I had a really successful summer in general but this one specifically I had a great tournament there and they uh Coach saw me there and he reached out to my coach and said he wanted to start recruiting me. And we went through that process, a couple of weeks long process, got the offer and then became a Gator. All right. Why did you why did you choose the University of Florida? Yeah, I chose University of Florida because everything is just unmatched. You know, we got the facilities and the, and the coaching staff. Everything made me feel at home. Me and my family just felt like it was a great situation for me academically and the sports wise, like, I mean, there's, you can't beat it, you know, with the facilities, like I said, the coaching staff was great to me. We have a great relationship. They have a good relationship with my coach too, as well. So, I mean, and that was my dream school all along. My mom went there. I got a lot of other family members that went there. So, I mean, couldn't be any better situation than university of Florida for me. So, yeah. All right. Everyone knows, I mean, you committed to university of Florida. Just tell us your top three of you choosing. Yeah. So I narrowed it down to three, mainly like two, but I had uh, narrowed it down to Florida, Tennessee, and Mississippi State. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, what advice would you give other people getting into the recruiting process? Yeah, so, I mean, if you're going into the recruiting process, don't let it stress you out. Like I said, you know, it's, it'll all come at you really fast. It can, it can be – you can choose it to – you can make it stress you out or you can just play your normal game and it'll keep even adding on. And you just got to treat it like it's a blessing to your hard work. It's a reward to all the work you've put in. I mean – and then once you make your decision, make it make sure you make you take your time with it and make the right decision. And then it's on from there. Uh huh. All right. Let's let's take it back to the last summer. You were having lower back pains all summer, but play, play through it all every tournament in the USA, even the select fest. You went to the doctor and then you're out for about one to two months with physical therapy. Your first tournament back in October, it was the freshman in WWA. You absolutely raked. You batted 500. Your OPS was 1,200, 10 hits, 9 RBIs. Just take us through the process of getting back to normal after the injury. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it was kind of an easy process. I was kind of fortunate, you know, it wasn't a huge injury. It was kind of just a nagging pain, you know, throughout the the summer, you know, you play a lot of games, especially now coming off of a high school season. Uh, once you play a lot of games, your body gets moving every single day and doing all this, you know, it, it can kind of get tough to take care of your body. And I feel like I could have done a little bit of a better job last summer. And that's why I paid the price, got a little bit of lower back pain, but I mean, it, it all ended out well, you know, the process was fine. It was like, like you said, one to two months, I had to only had to miss out on uh, one tournament in the fall. And I kind of came back better, better than ever. Like you said, it felt great when I came back and I just went through, you know, strengthening my core. Once I was taking time off, you know, trying to build that back up. So this injury doesn't come back. You know, I'd spent time uh -huh. at Torque and all kind of places that were getting me right. So, I mean, it kind of just, factors into, you know, if you're going to put the work in, you got to take care of your body at the same time. So, I mean, yeah. Luckily, that was in the fall. You have to miss anything out of your freshman season in high school. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about the NBA scout team. You play travel ball for them. You got seven D1 commits, three Florida commits, two Clemson, one Maryland, one Florida State. Just talk about that team and the talent that it has. Yeah, so I mean the talent the talent is unbelievable, you know, going around those type of players and the people that surround you on a team like that and the coaching staff, it only makes you a better player and a better yeah. person. So I mean, no matter what team we're all going to, we're all big one, one big family and it it kind of just contributes to our success because we've all known each other for a while and we we train together, we play together and uh everything, road trips and everything, it's all together. So I mean, going out there with the, with that type of talent like you mentioned, it just makes me a better player and a better person overall. Yeah. Um, if you just look at that NBA scout team roster, they're all around the same area. They've all played each other when they're younger. You know, that bondage that most teams in travel ball don't have. Most teams just just go up there. They don't know. They just they just meet the kids on the team. Just talk about how, you know, the bondage is on that team. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, the bonds is it's just different than other teams. You know, we we growing up, we're growing up like, playing against each other mainly like a lot of guys on the team I was playing against them. So, I mean, I've already known them. We've already known each other for years now. And now that we're all on a big team now, I mean, it's just – it's only an, an advantage for us. Like like you said, a lot of summer ball teams, they're just now meeting the kids uh -huh. where they show up at the travel ball like, hey, what's up, dude? Like, like they just now met them. Now it's like with us, it's been our whole life. Like it's we, – we don't know anything else. Like it's, yeah. it's our dudes that we've been through our whole life, like years with each other. So, I mean, it's just – that's obviously a big advantage for us. Yeah. Just talk about um, NBA scout team and training Christian Academy. You have the same head coach. Just talk about your relationship with him. Yeah. So that's uh, coach Murph. He's, he's a great mentor for me and a great coach overall. He's the best coach I've ever had. So, I mean, uh -huh. I think I've been with him for four to five years now and it's just, he's made me uh, just a great overall like person and a better hitter, a better player overall. Like he's just, He's kind of just been a, one of the bigger parts of my life so far. Uh -huh. I mean, he's, he's he's played a huge role for me and my family, and it, words can't describe how thankful we are for him. And uh, the the way he's built my character has been uh, better than any other, like, coach could do. Like, I mean, a lot of people want to focus on the sports and the baseball, like how good a coach can develop you. That really matters. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, is the guy going to be a good person and make you a better person off the field? And I think that's exactly what Coach Murphy does for me. Uh -huh. Uh, do you think Coach Murth has the same coaching style as he does with travel ball in uh, high, the high school season? Yeah, so I think he uh, it's the same old Murph with me. You know, I I I feel like he's the same coach. You know, he's always been a competitive guy. He's gonna he's gonna have a little bit of fire with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not gonna sit there and embarrass you on the field and yell at you in front of everybody and try to make a fool of you. He's gonna try to his best to develop you, like I said, as a player and even more importantly as a person. So I mean. He's been really great with that, and I think he's the same coach either way. He's really competitive, and he likes to win. So, I mean, he's, he's a great coach through high school and travel ball. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, we've got a couple more questions here. Let's just talk about your approach when you're walking up to the batter's box. What's going through your mind? Yeah, so I used to try the uh, like the thinking a lot when I'm going to hitting and stuff, and overthinking is not really good when you're going up to hit. So, I mean, i kind of thinking, you know, us as a team with coach Murphy leading us as a coach, he kind of, um, he, him and coach Julian, like our hitting coaches have been and Seb, we have coaches that, you know, we create scouting reports off the pitcher. We're going to face like a week before even. And, uh, it's kind of just, 
it, that really helps us a lot. So I have an approach off of the, each pitcher going into the game. And then when I'm on deck about to go up to the plate, you know, I'm thinking one thing and that's do damage to the pitch. I, my A swing, I'm trying to get my A swing to my pitch. So, I mean, I'm trying to do damage with that. And then the rest is history. So you talked about you train at Cork Performance. You know, Anthony Richardson just came out of University of Florida. He got drafted to the Colts. Uh, how was it just being able to train around guys like that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Torque Sports Performance is the best place possible as an athlete to go if you want to train as an athlete and get more athletic. I mean, like you said, Anthony Richardson, being able to train around guys like that and a lot of other pro guys is just a dream come true. Being able to see the way they navigate the weight room and the way that they do things, you know, it's crazy to see how athletic guys are like that. Like, he's one of the most athletic dudes I've ever seen. So, I mean, it's it's really cool to learn the way they do things and AJ and Tom, the way they they treat their um, clients like them, even when they're pro guys, they're still, they still bleed, bleed the same blood as us. I mean, it's uh -huh. cool to learn them, but you know, at yeah. the end of the day, we're all humans just trying to train in one little weight room like that. And it's just, it's awesome being able to learn. All right. So here's another question. Uh, what is your go-to artist before the game? Yeah. So, I mean, it can, it can, uh, mixed through a lot of different artists, you know, this year in high school ball is kind of dependent on who was controlling the speaker in the locker room. I think it was yep. mainly Jacob Miller this year. So with Jacob, you're going to get a lot of different artists. Like it can go from Taylor Swift to Lil Baby or anything like me. I don't really have a specific go-to, you know, I kind of just listen to my little playlist and yep. yeah, keep locked in, but I'm not one of those guys who have headphones in and won't talk to anybody before the game or just overly I guess just fixated on being locked in with music and stuff. I, I do listen to a lot of music throughout my life and uh, before games and stuff, but I don't have any specific way of doing it. I'll listen to it, but then I also like to be free with my game, my pregame and stuff and be me kind of. All right, let's just talk about what does the summer look like for Brady Harris and what are your goals for the summer? Yeah, so my summer looks like uh, a lot of action-packed tournaments, like jam-packed, you know, we got week-long, couple week-long tournaments, you know, traveling around the country, so I – I think my goals throughout those tournaments is just keep maintain a great batting average and uh, mainly be the best teammate possible for my yeah. other teammates. Be a good leader, be a good example to other people. Uh, even if things aren't going my way or if they are going my way, just try to keep level headed. Yep. All right, we got one final question here. If you would give any advice to any young baseball player, any kid that doesn't play any sports, what would you say to them? I would say, even if, like you said, if they don't play sports, if they're just going through life or they do play sports, just have fun with it. You know, it's easy to get caught up in, in this world we live in and uh, you can get stressed out. You can get a lot of things distracting you, you know, but I think it's uh, it definitely helps to stay focused on one goal and, you know, fulfill your dreams and have fun with it, man. And keep God yeah. your main part of life the way you uh, live life. So, I mean, uh -huh. at the center and have fun. All right, dude, I really appreciate you coming on to the show and talking about your baseball career and just your life. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me. It was an honor. Yeah, dude.